uh, I think when you deal with art, you need very general ideas and you need also to be very specific. Well, <laughs> that's my main point. Um, and, and also, second, uh, second uh, thing I would say, I would like to say first, is that, uh, as you will see, um, uh, literature take, uh, is, uh, from, from my way of, of uh, studying uh, art, history of art, literature is very important. So, you will understand why, I hope, I hope so. Um, uh, but, um, to put it simply, um, about this specific idea of tableau and composition, um, there is one key figure, one key writer. Uh, without him, you don't understand anything. <laughs> and he's French, like that. <laughs> and this writer is Baudelaire. You will not be very surprised. To, to, to hear that Baudelaire is important, well, but he's very important. And I know from my uh, own experience of teaching in, in, uh, in France and everywhere that most students, most young artists as you are, don't really read him. You read him through interpretations, through the interpretations of Benjamin, of uh, Baudrillard, and so Benjamin is very good, but it's an interpretation. Baudrillard, it's very bad, and so on. So, at the end, you don't read him. And the key thing, really, I insist on this point, when you deal with such a writer of such an importance, is to go back to the text and read the text, not comments about the text. And my own comments, you can forget them, uh, if you really read the text by yourself. I w what I will say is just to help you to read the text. As, and it is true also for the works we shall look at to, together. Uh, you have to look by yourself and study by yourself the works and not follow any command, even the best one. Um, I will give you an example. When I was 16, I discovered the work of Anton Artaud, who is the second major uh, French reference for me. And uh, in 67, uh, three years ago, three years before I started to read uh, uh, Artaud, Jacques Derrida, you know him, <laughs> everybody knows Jacques Derrida, had uh, published a wonderful text on Artaud, absolutely wonderful, in L'Écriture et la Différence. It's a great, great text, and it helped me a lot to enter the work of Artaud. But then I forgot Baudrillard, uh, Baudrillard of course, but I forgot uh, Derrida, you know, and I entered the work of Artaud, and I didn't I didn't reread this text uh, since, I don't know, maybe 20 years. I still said that it's a wonderful text, but Artaud is much better, of course. Voilà. That's very simple. <laughs> huh? So when you read the best comment, and this comment by Derrida is probably the best comment ever written on Artaud, it's just a comment. Okay? So it's why we said that the methodology would be empirical. Not empirical in the sense, in, I mean, I shall not, dis I mean, I will not make a big discourse about what is empiricism. It would be also very difficult in this country. <laughs> <laughs> so I will not do that. It would be funny for a French to come to London and, and give a talk about empiricism. Okay, but as you know, Deleuze, Gilles Deleuze did it. Gilles Deleuze reinvented uh, British empiricism and his French, so everything is possible. Okay, but, uh, so I will not do that. When, I, when we say empirical, it's mainly what we mean, uh, talking together, is going back to the text. So it's a very strange, or to the words. Right? In a way, my, my only attitude is that one, to go back to the text and the words. Uh, uh, in, you know, there was um, in the 60s something like that in psychoanalysis. It was, and 
I will mention this uh, uh, person a lot, Jacques Lacan. Uh, Jacques Lacan said, go back to Freud, because there was all this uh, construction about psychoanalysis and people were lost. Uh, so he said, okay, now let's go back to Freud and the text of Freud. And Lacan started to read, re-read Freud and in his seminars. So his seminars were precisely about that, about re-reading Freud. So it's what I would like to do with you a little bit to reconsider uh, what is the ta a tableau and what is a composition, what, what are these words, what are they uh, about, what, the, what they say, um, and do it, uh, as I said, in general terms and in very specific, uh, with very specific uh, 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 studies. Um, uh, tableau is coming from Latin language, it's a Latin word. Huh? So it's not, uh, it's why you don't have it in English. No, no, it's coming from tablatura, it's coming from this radical, and tableau is coming from the same word as table. Tabula. The, la table, this is a table in French, and tableau and table are coming from the same. Tabula and all this uh, uh, Latin uh, 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 radical. It's why, it's but, but I will get into that, of course. Uh, it's why a tableau is something uh, particular. But we shall, we shall see, okay? <laughs> Another question, no? So, uh, as a, a prologue, in a way, I would like to show you a few, few uh, images. First, these three images on one screen. Alors, that's typical. Uh, for me, these three images say a lot about modern art. Let's put it like this. Um, uh, we shall comment this, let's say, triptych, let's call it like that, this afternoon. Um, Right now, I just want to give you some very, very simple indications. What do you have? You have a very famous painting by who? Who knows? It's a painting by Mantegna. Andrea Mantegna. Uh, it was painted in uh, uh, 1490. Um, uh, and it's, uh, you can see it in Milano in the Brera Museum. The Brera is a museum connected with the school, the School of Art. Huh? A major museum connected with the School of Art. But uh, uh, the connection doesn't work. Anyway. <laughs> so it's uh, the, um, as you see, the dead Christ. Um, why this? Uh, reproduction, it's not, it, it is a reproduction in uh, black and white. And uh, why? Because the, the author of the drawing in the middle said that he was influenced by this painting to make this drawing. So who is this author in the middle? Who did this drawing? Ah, excuse me, it's an etching, etching. <laughs> but, but it's coming from a drawing. I do, we, we shall show you the drawing this afternoon. And there is no difference between the drawing and the etching. I mean, very little difference. <laughs> but, but it's an etching, for sure. Alors, who is the author? A major, I help you, a major British artist. My favorite British artist. <laughs> no. No. He was. He was. Richard Hamilton. Alors, we shall give all the details this afternoon. He, he did the etching very late, in 1990. But the drawing, he did the drawing very early. And 
uh, he, he, uh, and he did the etching 30 years after the drawing. Even more, it's 40 years. It's just amazing. So, it's a very, very important work by Richard Hamilton. Why? Because it is very early. It, no, the, the etching is very late, it's 1990, but it's coming from a drawing, a very early drawing. And this early drawing is about a specific moment of the novel by uh, James Joyce called Ulysses. Who read Ulysses? Ah. <laughs> 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 Alors, to tell you the truth, I gave a course of one year about Ulysses and modern art, because I think that this novel is very, very important for the understanding of modern art. Alors, and Richard Hamilton is one of the artists who read this book and who found in, in, in this book uh, uh, a strong, deep, personal uh, uh, source of inspiration connected with another source which is Duchamp. Th these are the two sources of Richard Hamilton. Marcel Duchamp, James Joyce. And when he was and in the uh, 50s he decided to make some illustrations illustrations of the book. As you probably know, illustration is very important in British culture, uh, more than in French culture, for example. And, and it's a very interesting point, illustration in itself. Huh? And he decided to illustrate the book. Even if you didn't read the book, you know that it is big. And you know that there are many, many, many images in this book, many possibilities of, of uh, seeing, I mean, for the reader, there are many things to uh, think of, uh, to imagine, uh, many images come to your mind when you read it, because it was written like that, to produce images. So you have images, a flow of images, and he decided just to select very few of these images. And among these very few images he selected from the book, this one. This one of one of the two main characters. I mean, no, of the, the main character, uh, with Leopold Blum. Leopold Blum, the, uh, with the main character, the other one. Um, um, the other one is Stephen de Dallas. And this is a moment in the novel where uh, 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 Bloom, Leopold Bloom, is wandering in the city center. There are many, many little things happen to him. Nothing important. Huh? It's a, quite a banal day in his life, and the book is about just one day of, of this uh, man. He's wandering in the city center, and he has the idea of going to a Turkish bath. Turkish bath. Uh, and, um, uh, um, and he's foreseeing uh, uh, his experience of the bath, of being in the water, in the uh, warm water and so on, okay? And so he's imagining, foreseeing himself in the bath. And in the narrative, there will be no description of, of him being in the Turkish uh, bath, but just him forcing himself, okay? And that's what uh, Hamilton represents. And he says that, so he represents Bloom forcing himself uh, in, the, in the water. But as you see, he represents uh, uh, Bloom not in a public bath, uh, on the bath, huh? 
bath, not in a public bath, but in, in the uh, uh, bath tube. So in a private uh, situation, not in a public situation. Okay? Um, so, and, uh, so you have an object, uh, the bath tube. And the, yes, it's a bath tube. No, on n'appelle pas ça comme ça. Bathtub, excuse me, bathtub. No, you can correct uh, my English. I'm no, uh, there is no problem. <laughs> no, if you don't understand, uh, if I use a, uh, an improper term like this, for example, and you don't understand, please uh, uh, shout. <laughs> no. uh, uh, the the third image is ah this one you know okay. <laughs> But maybe you don't know uh, what is the image of this work. Who did the photograph? The, the, no, the, 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 ah, it's, a, it's very good. But it's not Man Ray. <laughs> but it's very good. Because Man Ray was the very close friend of Duchamp. And they worked together a lot. So it could have been Man Ray, but precisely it is not Man Ray. And that's an interesting point. So who shot this image? Yes. <laughs> yes. It is Teglitz. Hello. You know the story of this work. I will not uh, tell you. But what you probably don't know is that Duchamp asked Stiglitz to do this reproduction of the work because of who was Stiglitz, of the uh, uh, character, or, I mean the, the, the figure, what Stiglitz represented in the New York scene uh, of art, um, and also because he knew that Stiglitz would magnify the object, that he would do something about it, that he would not just, that he would not just do a reproduction, that it would be an interpretation. And you will see tonight, uh, this afternoon, um, uh, what is, more precisely, what is the interpretation. Okay? So, now, so, all the details about these three works, you will get them this afternoon. Hello. Why these three works? The, the illustration by Hamilton is in between a work by Montaigne made in late uh, 15th century and uh, a photograph of ready-made, uh, famous ready-made by Duchamp. A photograph by Stiglitz of a ready-made by Duchamp. The illustration by Richard Hamilton of a novel uh, is in between the illustration by Montaigne of a moment of, uh, of the Christian uh, uh, text, of the, Christ, uh, te of the uh, text, uh, the founding text of, of uh, 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 Christianicism. On peut dire ça comme ça? Yes, good, yes, yes. And on the, the other side, it's not uh, an illustration, it's a reproduction, but it's a reproduction which presents itself as an interpretation. So it's not a, a simple reproduction. So you have an illustration between a painting, a tableau, because Montaigne is a real tableau, that's a perfect example of a tableau, and an object. But an object, as it is reproduced in an image, which is a photograph. And this illustration in the middle is uh, connecting 
a, 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 a picture in a tableau form and a photographical interpretation of an object. It's also connecting to uh, uh, different attitudes, ideological, let's say, attitudes, uh, to different creeds, let's put it like that. On the left, it is, uh, on the left you have, by Mantegna, you have a, a, a tableau a painting which is full of pathos. It is the pathos, the Christian pathos. This tableau is a perfect representation of the Christian pathos. You understand what I mean by pathos? Mm -hmm. huh? Okay. And on the uh, 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 right hand side, on the right of, of, of the Hamilton, what do you have? You have something totally different. Uh, no pathos. Uh, the feeling you get from the object is a feeling of something very vulgar. That's the way it was received at the time. And it's why Duchamp asked Stiglitz to make the reproduction, because he knew that Stiglitz would suppress, in a way, this vulgarity. Because Stiglitz was unable to deal with such a vulgarity without transforming it. So it's a vulgar object. And if you think of, uh, of any kind of psychological uh, 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 answer, response, excuse me, to it, you would say irony. Uh, irony is a key word for uh, uh, Duchamp. He was pretending to practice ironisme. It's an invention in French. Huh? L'ironisme. Uh, uh, it's a word, <coughs> you know, he was pretending to do ironisme uh, in the way uh, some painters before him uh, uh, did uh, impressionism or cubism or, or fauvism, you see, uh, huh? a new ism. Bon. An uh, ironical new is ism. <laughs> Um, so, you have this, uh, so, pathos, Christian pathos, and, and this kind of irony. Okay, but this irony is very special, also, if you relate it to uh, the central uh, work. Because, uh, so, as I told you, the Hamilton, when he started his, his work, had two key references. Joyce, Duchamp. <coughs> Joyce, Duchamp. <laughs> These are the two references of Hamilton. But if you read the text of Joyce, we shall do it this afternoon, and you will see how precise it is when you go to the text. Huh? Always, always you have, you must go to the text. When you go to the text by Joyce, you realize that this uh, vision of himself uh, Bloom has when he's going to the Turkish uh, bath is very specific. He's thinking of himself as, a, um, as you will see, but I would not like to say too much because I want you to discover it. He's uh, thinking of himself in oriental terms. Let's put it like that. You will discover the, the details. <laughs> <coughs> and he's uh, thinking of himself in terms which are the opposite, but it's explicit, huh? the opposite of the Christian pathos. Bloom is a Jew. And just before this moment where 
he, he thinks of himself, he foresees himself in the bath. He had uh, 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 seen, he had seen a mess in a church. And he was very surprised by the, uh, um, uh, the procedure of the mess. And this description of the mess, you will see this afternoon, is one of the most fantastic, is one of the most funny uh, 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 sacrilege. I mean, um, it's not the good word. Uh, what is a good word? Sin? No, no. Um, blasphemy. Voilà. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, one of the most be beautiful blas blasphemy ever written in, in literature. So, now you understand that this, you have here a history of art, a kind of <laughs> condensation of f five centuries of the history of Western art, which, are, which is also a kind of conflict between two representations of the world, two ideas, the Christian pathos and the oriental uh, 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 attitude. Oh, I tell you. Uh, he's thinking of himself in Buddhist terms. And you have to know that about this image, when it was published, was p uh, written a text uh, called The Buddha of the Bathroom. Voilà. Voilà. It's fantastic. It is just fantastic. Because uh, Hamilton, being interested by both Joyce and Duchamp, when he makes this illustration, connects the pages of Ulysses and this uh, story around the uh, Lurinoir of Duchamp. And this connection is made by Hamilton. So it means that uh, 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 a great artist uh, such as Hamilton can be, maybe, excuse me, in a way, an historian of art. Or, and more than an historian of art, an, uh, an interpreter of, of culture, of visual culture. But an interpreter of visual culture related, connect, or re connected with literature. Connected and not disconnected from literature. Not a visual culture as something uh, specific, disconnected from uh, the verbal. Huh? So, and it's why the illustration is so important because illustration is visual art related to uh, the uh, verbal art, which is uh, literature. Okay? So, this afternoon we shall get into the details of all this wonderful story. But, you see, at the end, you know, I, I, I was thinking how will I present my general attitude in, uh, as a, an historian of art. But an historian of art totally involved in uh, contemporary art. Huh? And for me, teaching is dealing with contemporary art. That's why, uh, uh, for me, teaching is so important, it's much more important than uh, the curating shows, for example, if, uh, even if I did a lot of curating. And uh, uh, for me, these three images tell what should be art history? <laughs> we should do art history like this. We should do art history the way Hamilton did it. Every teacher of art, of art history, should follow this way of, 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 of thinking and, and, and should try to do this connection, to uh, uh, think of art at least, um, I mean, to think of, to address, let's say, Western art, at least Western art, 
euh, en long term process. Hein? Uh, I, have, I can give you an advice. Don't be trapped in so-called contemporary art. It's very risky. Uh, because first, contemporary art became a labor. And a labor which is in itself very problematic. Second, there is a very deep intellectual corruption in what is called contemporary art. We can talk about it later if you want. What I mean by intellectual corruption. I'm not talking about financial corruption. Huh? That's something else. And I don't care about that. It's not my, my point. Uh, and, and third, contemporary art is too close to us. It, to think about art, you need more distance. But more distance doesn't mean that you don't look at what is contemporary, but you look at it from a, distant, uh, a distance. You look at it in a, what we call in French a durée, uh, a duration. Okay? So that's what I propose here. And you see what, when you do that, uh, you see that uh, the history of forms, because there you have three forms, uh, three very different forms. You have a, a painting, a tableau, you have an etching, which is an illustration, and you have a third form, which is a photograph about an object. Uh, or, I mean, you have an object first, but you have also the photograph, re, uh, the reproduction, the photographical reproduction of an object. So you have three forms, at least, or four, four, if you consider that the uh, third image is about uh, the object and the photograph. Okay, so you have at least three and maybe four forms. Uh, and these four forms are very different, but they are, as you see, related. And, and what is interesting is their relationship, their contrast, and what they are uh, about. Uh, so, we come back this afternoon to uh, this uh, triptych. Okay. Now I will not be. I will be even shorter about uh, an, a, a second uh, uh, visual uh, indication of of the tableau, uh, because I want to introduce you now to the idea of the tableau. Uh, this is a tableau of of who knows. Bravo, Henri Matisse. Uh, Henri Matisse was born in. Uh, 1869, and he died in 1954. This is not one of his masterpieces. It's probably not one of his major paintings. Uh, it is presented on, in the Museum of Modern Art in New York, so you can uh, see it uh, each time you go there. It's on the wall. They don't uh, keep it in the, in the reserve. Um, um, it's a great, large, I mean, a great, large painting. Um, uh, let's go fast, in a cubist way. <laughs> it is the, uh, it was made by Matisse when, in 1915, when he tried to give a, 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 a a response to Cubism in these two years, 1516. And this is one of these paintings which are in this dialogue of Matisse with Cubism. The dialogue of Matisse with Cubism is fundamental. Uh, for example, Duchamp. That's something which has to be said. If Duchamp became Duchamp, it's because he started as a Cubist. Uh, painter influence in the uh, uh, in the line, let's say, in the track, following the track of Cezanne, uh, and you have in uh, uh, Philadelphia a painting of his a portrait of his father, painted as in the Cezannian uh, uh, way, and then he became Cubist, and then he stopped. <coughs> 
But he didn't stop because of Picasso. He stopped painting because of Matisse.